heteroskedasticity is one of the problems that you may encounter in regression analysis. So regression analysis assumes that the error term is homoscedastic, which means that the error term's variance does not depend on any of the observed variables. Deep House had this problem. So they present actually a pretty good example of how you are supposed to be dealing with problems in regression analysis. And they say that they have a heteroscedasticity problem. Then they explain what the problem is and what they did with the problem. So heteroscedasticity is uh, in their paper a megaphone opening left shape of the residuals. So the assumption is not actually about residuals, but it's about the error term, which we don't observe. And uh, normally we assume that these uh, observations are equally spread out around the regression line so that they are equally far apart here as they are from here. And then uh, here we don't have that, so we have a heteroscedasticity problem. The dispersion of the error term is a lot less here than it is here. So we can see that this is a, a megaphone opening left. And uh, that is a violation of the fifth regression analysis assumption. So why would that be a problem? Let's take a look at how heteroscedasticity influences regression estimates. Here we have two uh, populations. So this is a small population of about 500 observations where the variable x receives values from 0 to 5 and that's an independent variable here and the regression line goes here and it is uh, we have homoscedastic errors because the error terms variance does not depend on uh, value of x. Then we have heteroscedastic, see, heteroscedastic is the problem here. We have the same regression line going here and then uh, but the observations are close to the regression line here and then they spread out once we go right. So this is a, this and the, this both plots have the exact same variance of the error term but here the variance increases to the right and here it's constant. When we estimate a single regression model the results look pretty pretty, pretty much the same. So we take a sample of uh, 50 observations on the left hand side sample of 50 observations on the right hand side that correspond to these observations. We do regression lines, they look the same. The problem of heteroscedasticity is that if we uh, estimate, we take repeated samples from the same population many many times and estimate the same regression model, we get results that look like that. So here on, on the right hand side we can see the heteroscedasticity data. The regression lines are much more spread out so the slope of the regression lines over repeated observations vary a lot more than it does here. So this is a lot less variation than here. Part of it, this uh, is related to the fact that here the regression lines cross here and they cross here a bit more to the right in the first plot. But that explains only a very small, small part of this difference. So why would that be a problem? It is a problem for two reasons. So the variance of the estimates increases about 30% going from left to right and uh, that means that OLS estimates are efficient in the right on the left hand side but then on the right hand side here they are inefficient. Why OLS estimates are inefficient? We have to consider alternatives and an alternative estimator called weighted least squares would be more efficient than OLS that makes OLS inefficient. The reason is that here the, the observations are close to the regression line so these observations tell us quite precisely where the regression line goes because the variation of the error term here is small and then the variation increases. So these observations are a lot less capable of telling us where the regression line goes. The idea of weighted least squares estimation then is to weight these observations a bit less than these observations and we get more precise estimates that way and increased efficiency. But that's uh, a minor problem. There is a bigger problem. The, the bigger problem is that standard errors become biased. It is okay that our estimates are imprecise, but we should not be overstating the precision. So that is uh, lack of efficiency we can, we can live with, but being biased, that's bad. Being inconsistent, that's worse. Uh, the reason why the standard errors are biased is that the formula for standard error here depends on, on three different things. So this is a simple uh, regression with done just one independent variable. So the, there is no r squared term. The variance is simply the variation of the error term divided by the variation of 
the independent variable. The independent variable is the same. So the only thing that matters here is the variation of the error term. And the variance of the error term is the same for both plots. It's just that uh, this plot varies uh, a lot more on the right hand side than the left hand side. So this equation gives the exact same standard error estimates on average for both these cases. But because these cases differ, the estimates vary a lot more here than they do here. This equation is only unbiased for the first plot but not the second plot. So the consequence is that our standard errors become biased. What do we do with that? We have now there are options. The, the simplest option to deal with heteroscedasticity is, to, is just to live with the inefficiency. The inefficiency difference may not be small, may not be uh, substantial anyway, but the standard error bias is a problem. Fortunately, we can just apply something called heteroscedasticity robust standard errors and that will produce us consistent standard errors even under heteroscedasticity. So some researchers go as far as saying that um, you should always use these uh, heteroscedasticity robust standard errors. For example, Antonakis in his 2010 paper on COSA claims says that you should always as a rule apply these robust standard errors. But not everyone agrees. There are reasons why you uh, don't, shouldn't always be using robust standard errors. For example, John Fox, uh, who has written most of the R packages that I use on this course, has, has said that uh, we shouldn't really be using robust standard errors unless we need them. The reason is that uh, when you relax some assumptions that always comes with a cost. So the regression analysis, the normal standard errors are unbiased in all sample sizes. But the robust standard errors, uh, while eliminating the heteroscedasticity, the homoscedasticity assumption, come with the cost that they are only asymptotically unbiased, which means that they can be biased in small samples. So if you don't have a heteroscedasticity problem, or you have a heteroscedasticity problem that is very mild, then using the normal conventional standard errors is probably a better choice in small samples. If you have a large sample, thousands of observations, then uh, using the robust standard errors as a rule is probably a good idea. Deep House's paper presents a good uh, example of how you report heteroscedasticity. So as uh, with any other regression assumptions, you have to state if you had any problems with that assumption. Then you explain how you identify the problem. They say that they plotted uh, the, the residuals against the fitted values or predicted values and they identify the shape there. So that is indication of heteroscedasticity. And then uh, you explain what you do about the problem. So they used weighted least cross estimation and that's not very common anymore because we now have the heteroscedasticity robot standard errors that are implemented as a standard feature in the leading statistical packages. So doing uh, just using robot standard errors is a lot easier and it produces you almost the same as good result as using weighted least scores.